the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We just deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
whose glory it is always to have mercy. Be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways, and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith, to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. This is the word of the Lord.
The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 5. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you, as is proper among saints. Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place. But instead, let there be thanksgiving. For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure, or who is covetous, that is an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not associate with them. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Casts out demons by Beelzebub, the prince of demons, while others, to test him, kept seeking from him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and a divided household falls. And if Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that I cast out demons by Beelzebub. And if I cast out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own palace, his goods are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks him and overcomes him, he takes away his armor in which he trusted, and divides his spoil. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest, and finding none, it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds the house swept and put in order. Then it goes and brings seven other spirits, more evil than itself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. As he said these things, a woman in the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breasts at which you nurse. But he said, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and keep. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things that is all and indivisible, and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, the God of his Father before all worlds, God of God.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do you renounce the devil? Do you renounce all his works? Do you renounce all his ways? In the rite of holy baptism, we ask these three questions. And every time I've witnessed or performed a baptism, it's felt a little awkward to ask oftentimes a baby, an infant, if they renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways. It seems odd to us because we have this unscriptural idea about children. We think that children are somehow innocent and thereby could not possibly be judged. Maybe they don't even sin, we think. We must dismiss this evangelical idea of an age of accountability, whereby beforehand we are saved by some other means than the forgiveness of sins and faith in that. No, we ask these questions at the rite of holy baptism because it makes plain for us that which is not always easy to see. That a battle is raging all around us and indeed inside each of us between God and the devil. Indeed, both God and the devil desire to have you. The devil wants you to go with him to hell, that place that was not made for you, but was made for the devil and the other fallen angels. He desires to deceive and mislead you into false belief and despair and other great shame and vice, and thereby lead you away from our Lord Jesus Christ. But God wants you too. God desires that you would be his own child and receive from him in his kingdom every good and perfect gift which comes from the Father that you would live with him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. But make no mistake about it this day, dear friends. The devil is real. He is active. He is at work right this moment, seeking to deceive and mislead you. And he will not stop any time soon until the very last day. And while we don't see demon possession perhaps in the same exact manner that we hear of it in other places or in other times, demon possession likewise is real. It is the devil who would want us to believe that that sort of thing doesn't happen anymore, that the devil isn't so active among us as he used to be at the time of Christ. No, the devil is real and he is at work and people are possessed by demons this very day. But God loves you and sent his son, Jesus Christ, to win the victory over the devil, to take your sins upon himself and thereby, with his blood, defeat the evil one. We should be clear, likewise, that there is no neutral ground. Jesus says in our text, whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. If you are not gathered together with our Lord Jesus Christ, then you are scattered even unto death and hell. If you don't belong to God, you belong to the devil. But take heart, dear friends, in Christ. For you this day belong to our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who has come to claim you as his own. He has come to claim not only you, but all of his glorious creation. Thus, in our gospel reading, after Jesus drives out the demon that was making the man mute, and after being accused of being in league with Beelzebul, and we should make a note about this likewise, Jesus rebuts this attack with clear logic. The devil can't drive himself out. A kingdom divided against itself will not stand. And oh, by the way, he says, if I drive out demons by Beelzebul, then how do your fathers drive them out? Therefore, you will be judged by your fathers, he says. 
But he goes on to say this, when a strong man, fully armed, guards his own palace, his goods are safe. Here he's describing the devil. A strong man who guards his goods, that is, those whom he seeks to be with him in hell. And his armor that he guards them with is sin and death. Those things which terrify us. But Jesus goes on, But when one stronger than he attacks him and overcomes him, he takes away his armor in which he trusted and divides his spoil. Your Lord Jesus Christ is the stronger man. And this is what he is saying to the Pharisees here who doubt him. And to those who seek signs, you have received the sign that the one stronger than the devil has come, and you see it before you. He has driven out demons. That is to say, Christ Jesus, standing before them that day, had power and continues to have power over the devil. Not by Beelzebul, the prince of demons, but because he is God in the flesh. And he has come to seek you his spoil, his treasure. You cannot belong to the devil because the devil has created nothing and thereby can lay claim on nothing. God created you and you thereby belong to him. As mentioned, hell was not created for men. God did not create men that he would damn them. Hell was created for the devil, and he seeks that all men should come to a knowledge of him and be saved. And this is why he took on human flesh. That he could take upon himself all of the accusations that the devil would level against you. And that you could find in Jesus Christ the answer to all of your temptations and all of your suffering and all of your sorrow and all of your trial and all of the assaults and the, and the attacks of the devil. You can say, what of them? Yes, indeed, you can accuse me of sin, but the blood of Christ Jesus stands between you and me and cleanses me of all my sin. For Christ has taken up my flesh to redeem it, and he has done so. Crucified and risen and ascended to the right hand of the Father, and there he sits as the judge of the living and the dead. And the first among them is Satan. And though he prowls around like a roaring lion, now he has been defeated by Christ Jesus. And all who are baptized are baptized into that victory. They are baptized into his death and resurrection and are united to the life that he now lives. And at every baptism, we get to see with our eyes that which the Holy Gospel proclaims to us. The devil driven out, and one turned from darkness to light. Mute lips that could not speak the praise and confession of faith of their creator, now opened to confess the true faith, and to sing and to give thanks and praise to God. Is this not an incredible thing to witness? To see there in holy baptism the victory of Christ on display, that the devil is renounced with all his works and all his ways, and then the victory of Christ is poured out upon men. We see the dashing of all the lies and all the torment and all the accusations of the devil. And we see forgiveness of sins, life and salvation in Christ Jesus. There in holy baptism. But Jesus warns us in our gospel reading for the day. That holy baptism is not some sort of inoculation or vaccine against the devil. Whereby as long as we can claim to have been baptized, our lives do not matter. As long as we can say that the devil was driven out, then surely he will never come back again. By no means. It is true, you dear baptized Christians, you belong to Christ Jesus. The devil still assaults you night and day. And you were delivered from sin and death for a purpose. As surely as we heard God declare that his people ought to be delivered from the hand of Pharaoh, he says that they would be delivered for a purpose. He tells Moses and Aaron to speak to Pharaoh, let my people go that they may serve me. 
God has delivered you from the evil one that you might live lives of faith, that you might be imitators of God and walk in the light as he is in the light, that you might flee from your sins, that you might renounce the devil again and again and find life in the word and the sacraments, these very gifts, these means of grace that God gives to you. The lie that the devil perpetrates on us again and again, which we heard there in our epistle reading, is that our sins matter little. That they can be dealt with either by our own efforts or that they don't really matter anyway. That is to say, that if we imagine that the house has been swept clean by our holy baptism, that all evil in us is gone, and that we need no more forgiveness after that, we need no more church, we need no more holy scriptures, we need no more gifts of God, we have deceived ourselves. And the devil, indeed, as Jesus declares, comes back with seven more demons, and the last state is worse than the first. Jesus says, when the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest. Waterless places. Sounds like a renouncing of baptism, doesn't it? And finding none, finding no rest, it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds the house swept and put in order. Then it goes and brings seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. Jesus has driven out the devil from among you. The sting and victory of death and the grave are gone. This armor that the devil seeks to use against you has been stripped away, and Jesus has plundered his spoil. He has taken you back for himself and prepared a place for you in heaven. But you must treasure up this word of God that has saved you and keep it in your hearts again and again. As good as earthly gifts might be, as the woman declares, blessed is the womb that bore you, Jesus, and the breasts at which you nurse. Indeed, blessed is Mary. Blessed are all the earthly gifts that God gives us. But blessed even more are those who hear the word of God and keep it, who treasure it up in their hearts again and again. For your house has not been left empty, dear friends, but instead the Holy Spirit resides with you day in and day out through the power of that same word, through the power of the holy sacraments, beating back the devil and all of his accusations. I am baptized into Christ, we say, and we will sing here as a communion hymn. God's own child, I gladly say it, I am baptized into Christ. In this proclamation, the devil is driven back again and again. The Christian's life is warfare on this side of heaven. We are not fighting flesh and blood. We're fighting the devil and his lies. But the finger of God, his word, is at work among us. And that which beats back the devil is the truth. The truth of Christ Jesus who sets us free. The defeat of the devil that we receive through the cross and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends in Christ, the victory over Satan has been won and it is yours. And may God strengthen your faith this day and always by the power of his word, that you might cling to him and cherish up that word in your hearts unto life everlasting through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty and most merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for all your goodness and tender mercies, especially for the gift of your dear Son, and for the revelation of your will and grace. Implant your word in us that with good and honest hearts we may keep it and bring forth the fruits of faith. Grant health and prosperity to all who are in authority, especially to the President and Congress of these United States, the Governor and Legislature of this state, and to all those who make, administer, and judge our laws. Grant them grace to rule according to your good pleasure for the maintenance of righteousness and the hindrance and punishment of wickedness, that we may lead quiet and peaceable lives in all godliness and honesty. According to your good pleasure, turn the hearts of our enemies and adversaries, that they may cease their hostilities and walk with us in meekness and in peace. Although we have deserved your righteous wrath and punishment, yet we ask you, O most merciful Father, not to remember the sins of our youth nor our many transgressions. Out of your unspeakable goodness and mercy, defend us from all harm and danger to body and soul. Preserve us from false doctrine from war and bloodshed, from plague and pestilence, from all calamity by fire and water, from hail and tempest, from failure of harvest and from famine, from anguish of heart and despair of your mercy, and from an evil death. In every time of trouble, show yourself a very present help, the Savior of all, especially to those who believe. Receive, O God, our bodies and souls and all our talents, together with the offerings we bring you. For by his blood your Son has purchased us to be your own, that we may live under him in his kingdom. These and whatsoever other things you would have us ask of you, O God, grant us for the sake of Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Son into our flesh 
to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into On the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Now may this holy body and this precious blood strengthen and preserve you, body and soul, in the one true faith, unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.